Sounds like the Eagles' free agent addition stole the show today during the Birds' second OTA open practice as John Ross looked faster than ever. Plus, Isaiah Rogers intercepted Jalen Hurts while covering A.J. Brown. I've got the full highlights and standouts from a very interesting Eagles OTA practice. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. I think there are three main things that everybody wants to know after the Eagles' second open OTA practice. Like, one, who showed up. Two, who's getting starting reps, and three, of course, who flashed. So let's just jump right into it. First off, absences. Who was there? Who wasn't? Well, I know you all want to know if James Bradbury was at OTAs today, and the answer is nope, he wasn't there again. But he wasn't alone, though. No Darius Slay, no Devontae Smith, no CJ Gunner Johnson, no Josh Sweat, and no Lane Johnson. All of those were no shows of practice. And again, everybody gets a pass. It's voluntary OTAs. We're not going to freak out about this or read into this player or that player. But with the post June 1st cut really starting to loom for James Bradbury, can you blame everybody for wondering why he's not really there? Although, let's be fair towards Bradbury, he does have a charity event scheduled for today and tomorrow in Alabama. That could kind of explain his absence. Although, in reality, nobody knows what's really going on inside Bradbury. Bradbury's head right now, mandatory camps next week should really be our final answer. Now, with both Slay and Bradbury missing today, that means other people got moved up the depth chart, and what do you know, Isaiah Rodgers ran yet again with the ones, although Keely Ringo was the other starting cornerback on the outside which means Keely Ringo was back at OTAs after missing last week's open practice, which is great news for everybody, especially me, who wants to see the young corner continue to grow and get a bunch of reps. And what do you know, he did have an interception of Jalen Hurts on a downfield pass to Paris Campbell during 7 on 7 Now, if anybody flashed big time today, it has to be Isaiah Rogers. His name popped up time and time again from all the reporters who were out there. He had blanket coverage on all Eagles starting receivers, and guess what? He had a pick six off of Jalen Hurts on a slant route he perfectly jumped during 11-on-11s while he was covering A.J. Brown. And apparently reporters weren't the only ones taking notice that Rodgers having a very impressive day. His former Colts teammate Paris Campbell told reporters after practice that this cornerback has been very impressive. Um, well, just just knowing him um, and obviously seeing him out there, uh, he's not really missing a beat. Uh, you can tell he stayed in shape. Um, I actually talked to him and asked him, like, they were like what did you do for a, a whole year? And... Um, he was telling me like he was trying to emulate his schedule as he as if he was in the season, um, you know. So he would he would work out on Sundays and kind of take Tuesday as his day off, and then kind of go through workouts as he was practicing. And uh, it shows, man. Um, but he he's a he's a skillful player, uh, smart, instinctive. Uh, he's got all the athletic ability in the world, and um, you know I think I think he he would be a great piece to the team. And let's be honest, OTAs are about making the most of the reps that you're given. And with James Bradbury being out, Rodgers has been one of the starting cornerbacks and really has flashed the past couple of days. I said yesterday it's going to be very hard to keep him off the football field when training camp starts, and I continue to stand by that take. Oh, and side note, shout out to the winner of the Jalen Carter Nike t-shirt giveaway. That is BWolf197. BWolf, email me. Go down below, description box. You'll find my email. Everything that you need. I need your size and proof that you are who you are. Again, just read down below. I'll get it sent to you. Now, it is worth mentioning Cooper DeGene, Quinion Mitchell, and Eli Ricks were rightfully mixed with the twos today. No one really stood out from the group, but again, they're rookies. They're just trying to learn and not get in trouble, so no shocker there. Although, I really love what Isaiah Rodgers told the media today when he was asked about the DB group, especially the rookies as a whole. A lot of great, great talent, great guys. A lot of guys, like you said, who can play inside and outside. And just a lot of a lot of guys just wouldn't learn, you know, including the rookies. They come in and ask questions, you know, questions that I never asked when I was a rookie. So just knowing that they were willing to learn and learn from me. You know, even when you're sitting out a year, they still trust my knowledge and trust my uh, game plan going into practice. So I think that's the one thing about this room is everyone's just willing to learn. Now, some other notable position battles from today. Makai Becton started at right tackle in for the missing Lane Johnson. And Tyler Steen, no shock, but he was at right guard. Although I was surprised by the next standout who, yet again, keeps getting a lot of attention. And that is linebacker Zach Bond, who shared starting rest with N'Kobe Dean. Shout out to Dean for being back on the football field. But what do you know? He had an interception today off of Jalen Hurts on a tip pass where he came down with a football. Bond can't keep his name out of the highlights. Like so far during the first open OTAs, reporters keep flocking to the fact that he's looked very, very good. Now, it's OTAs. Anyone can look good. I, you know, everything's with, with a grain of salt. But I keep getting some Christian Ellis vibes from Zach Bond. I'm just really surprised that he would be this good this early. Same thing was for Christian Ellis last year. He had an interception of Jalen Hurts. Everybody freaked out. Then training camp came and it was like, whoa, he's not as good as we thought. I think we have to wait and reserve our judgment on Zach Bond, but let's just be real, so far so good for the young linebacker. 
Oh, and for anyone keeping track, Jalen Hurts, yes, he threw three interceptions, but Kenny Pickett, he also got intercepted by Makai Gardner, so let's just kind of stop the Jalen Hurts haters from emerging from their caves a little bit earlier, as, you know, the always reliable ESP said Hurts had a solid 7-on-7 seven -seven session, his only completion was a drop by Joseph Ngata, and had a nice few throws, including one to A.J. Brown. But for the very few Pickett lovers out there, I'm going to give you at least some footage of Kenny Pickett wearing number seven and working on some passes to the running backs to begin practice. Now, quick side note on A.J. Brown, I just love the fact that he's been at all of these practices. Like, he doesn't have to be there. Demonte Smith has not been there. But the Birds have a very young receiver group behind him and Smitty, and it's just good to see him out there leading by example and helping this young group grow together. Now, speaking of those young receivers, I could not believe the amount of reporters who were raving about John Ross today. Yes, that John Ross, newly signed John Ross. Jeff Kerr noting that John Ross finding ways to get open in his first OTA practice. Paris Campbell and wide receiver coach Aaron Moorhead give him some compliments after a catch. Now, I have zero expectations for John Ross after they signed him, like literally zero. But if he keeps flashing like this, he's got a real shot to not only continue to make the roster and, you know, live out that entire first year contract, but he fits the mold of what they kind of want in a guy who can take the top off of a defense and maybe has better hands than Quez Watkins. Oh, and I must say, I loved his press conference today after practice. What he told the media was all very, very impressive. He seems super motivated. I haven't lost a step. Um, I'm still the same guy. Um, even I feel like I'm better than what I was just because where I am mentally. You know, I, I think physically that was probably my that was probably my biggest problem. I, I've dealt with so many injuries, and I mean, sure enough, you guys know, you've heard. Um, but I think what was hindering <clears throat> my success was my mental um, but because of how I was feeling physically, you know, so tying all that together, I think it kind of put me in a bad place. But where I am now, like, I don't see myself in a bad place at all. So Now, pair all of that with the fact that he said he feels mentally faster than he ever did. He explained that during his press conference as well. He's not, you know, faster than 4-2-2. But if he's in the 4-3s, 4-3-5s, oh my gosh, look out for this guy in a couple of weeks. I think I'm faster. And I know that's going to be crazy to say, but um, I'm not feeling the same way I felt before physically so that's why I say I think I'm faster and when I when I say that don't get me wrong I'm not I ran 422 I'm not saying I'm 415 or anything but what I'm saying is um, I just feel better so I think I can consistently be faster and I think that was my biggest thing like can this guy go every single day and look like look the same every single day and I feel that I'm getting to the point where I can be consistent with my speed now, all of us keep wondering if Jordan Davis is actually in shape because it's hard to, you know, look at videos from across a football field and go, yeah, he looks 10 pounds lighter, but everyone keeps saying he does look pretty darn good. Apparently, he had a sack during 11 on 11s, and afterwards, he told the media that he has lost weight and is feeling great at 350 pounds right now. You know, it's just diet. <clears throat> really, just diet. Cutting out the juice and shit. Or <laughs> cutting out the juice and stuff. Um... <laughs> Yeah, but like stuff like that, just making minor changes to lifestyle, you know, being more active in my lifestyle. If I have a day off, making sure I do something active, whether that's walking outside, going outside, you know, um, getting into backpacking now. So, you know, just going on little hikes and stuff like that, trying to be more of one with nature and stuff like that. Just little stuff to get me outside. Don't want to be sedentary. Don't want to sit inside all the time when I have free time. Know I should be doing something improving. Where that's watching film, you know, doing stuff like that. You know, if you're going to sit there and watch TV, watch 15 minutes of film before you start watching TV. Now, that didn't convince you because it's coming straight from Jordan Davis, and he's not going to say, yeah, I'm fat right now. How about Nolan Smith's press conference when he was asked about JD's fitness level? If you can't tell, that boy look good. He nice and slim. He running around. He doing box drills like it's nothing. And the box drill, really, I told him, it's like a linebacker drill. Like, we, Coach Wash makes us do it just because we're all linebackers, DNs, but... Them big boys be doing it, and I, I couldn't be more proud of them just because it's not an easy drill, especially if you, you go out there and do it right now, I bet you you would die, so it, yeah, <laughs> and then imagine doing four sets of it, five dots, you got to touch everyone and finish through, so I just appreciate, I just appreciate the work that they do because it will bring us all closer, like if you work hard and you sweat together, you connect together, and then you play together. Now, Cooper DeGene was fielding punts yet again today and apparently had a nice one-handed grab of kind of a tricky punt. Although Anai Smith did not participate in individual drills, he was also on the football field fielding punts as well. He muffed one, but again, you can't really take much from that, but people are wondering, so there you go. Oh, and by the way, the Nolan Smith press conference was everything that you'd expect from a Nolan Smith press conference. He was fun. He was, you know, full of juice. He was exactly as you remember Nolan Smith from the last time you saw him in front of the media. I'm sure Josh Davis will throw a lot of clips of that on his show later tonight, but I love this one particular 
particular clip of Nolan explaining how healthy and fit he is following the shoulder injury this past year. Did it go? You want me to lift my hand up and see? Just, I mean, just <laughs> I'm just playing like, with you. I'm just playing with you. Like it was an issue last year at times. Hey man, we all struggle with our own battles internally, but hey, it's ready to go though. Overall, this practice felt like we got a lot more juice, a lot more actual meat out of it than the first open practice last week. But overall, I think it was a very, very successful OTA practice. And Philadelphia, they have some guys who are not household names yet, are not really, you know, solidified starters who are going to be forces to reckon with come training camp. And I can't wait to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Now, be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for my Brandon Lee Gowton interview. I'm going to try to have him on again because he was actually at, you know, the Eagles practice with Bleeding Green Nation today. Get his thoughts from the sideline. That'll drop hopefully sometime this weekend. But we play more stuff happening in the next couple of days and weeks. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.